All right, this gentleman here is the father of the host of the Airbnb we are staying at in Nish, Serbia. And I wanted to take the time as we we're making the journey with him to let you know what we're doing with him, which is we are headed with him to the local Serbian police station to register as guests in our host's home because by law we are required to, or maybe more specifically, the host is required to register us as guests. And instead of not doing that and then possibly both of us facing a penalty uh, having not registered, uh, we are heading with him now to do so. I don't know the legality of filming inside of a police station in Serbia, so I'll make it quick, but we're here waiting outside of the office where we will uh, turn in our application form looks like maybe there's somebody already in there so we're just being patient all right so following through uh having just gotten here i wanted to let everyone know the process we were going through uh, as stated we came to register and the only hiccup that there appeared to be was that um the entry point at which we stated we had entered was incorrect they penned in the correct uh entry point and um then stamped and returned a copy of the form that we had submitted to them at which point I asked, should we keep this on us at all times to present to the police if necessary? Uh, in response, the gentleman said, keep this and we will present this when we exit the country. So I'm assuming at the border, we will be crossing by land, uh, most likely uh, headed uh, west out of Serbia. But we will present this at the border, apparently. So the, the registration... Um, process didn't seem so bad. We just went to the host who didn't speak any English, went to an office within the police station nearest us. He knew which uh, room to go into. We went in there, they conversed in Serbian and everything was all good and he gave us the copy and we left. So no worries. Hello, good morning. Rachel and I are here at Pleasure Care, with C-A-I-R, which is uh, a reference to the park that's actually across the street from the, re the restaurant. But I wanted to get on here real quick before food came out and uh, go over prices of uh, food and restaurant. Forgive me if the music's loud. Um, so I just wanted to show you real quick. Uh, for example, the basically like all the breakfast items are three dollars. So this is three hundred dinar, and one euro is uh, three hundred. Or excuse me, one euro is one hundred dinar. So that would be a three euro omelet. Uh, 360, let's see, um, 360, it's all fairly cheap. I actually found the most expensive item on the menu, which is this steak uh, with gorgonzola, vegetables, grilled vegetables, um, 14, uh, 1,450 dinar, which is uh, $14.50 for a steak entree in this restaurant. And we each got a beer as well. Let's see if I can find that real quick. Sorry, I didn't have that ready, but I think it was just a couple bucks. So, uh, my beer, my tall beer was $2.20, and Rachel's was $1.50 for those uh, draft beers, which is, I think, that's pretty damn good. So one more thing I wanted to note, if you can guess by the non-smoking sign on our table, that this is a restaurant that has smoking, uh, basically, Three quarters of this restaurant is smoking, and the corner that we were in is not smoking. And there's no separation or um, like mass ventilation, so we're basically sitting in the smoking section. It's like the Marlboro Light section, <laughs> uh, which is unfortunate, having quit using tobacco uh, several years ago. But that's just how it is, and we either don't eat in restaurants or uh, we put up with it. And not so bad to just be passive about other people's choices and uh, you know we'll enjoy our food the best we can in consideration that all he can smell is smoke but um, but it is what it is it's basically like mid 90s USA here in restaurants is basically how it is huh mm -hmm. it's a good comparison yeah this isn't necessarily something to do but maybe something to keep in mind uh, Rachel and I have come Oh, about five days earlier uh, than our departure date to go to the uh, the bus department here in Niche. It's basically like the Niche Central bus station, I believe is what it's referenced as. But we're going to go now and see about getting some tickets today that we don't have to worry about uh, obtaining a seat the morning we want to leave and doing it all last minute. Uh, this way we'll just be a little bit more prepared.
All right, that went incredibly easy. Uh, prior to you approaching the window, Rachel wrote down uh, the number two, our destination city, which is Skopje, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And also we wrote the date um, in the manner that you would see it in Europe. So we wrote day, month, and then year. And which worked out because we thought that the, we had an understanding with the woman. Um, and unfortunately, uh, we did not relay the date correctly. We, we did present her with the information we had written down, but I don't, I don't think she looked at the date and she assumed he wanted her to get for today. So before we left the platform, which was just here, we actually made sure our uh, ticket was correct. Here we noticed that the date was wrong after she pointed out that our platform was platform 12. And um, so we just showed her the image that we had written down again with the date. And she just said, oh, okay. And then she um, basically looked into the system, printed us out two new tickets, and handed us our ticket and smiled and sent us on our way. Uh, very pleasant. People here, are, um, they don't ever seem put off when you need help or if they need to help you. So don't be hesitant to approach people here. Um, I've mentioned in the past uh, that I have like high anxiety, so it's, it's kind of hard for me to do certain things. So anyone who's uh, maybe in a similar, has similar conditions, um, be aware that like these things are easy to uh, accomplish here. I think the people are very friendly and they make it easy for you to do particular things and just be out in general. We are just here outside of the uh, Red Cross Nazi concentration campus, it's labeled. Uh, this here, as you may have uh, read, was a monument to the Red Army uh, soldiers who fell on November 7th, which I believe is uh, must be relevant uh, to a battle of some sort. But here's the entryway here. We're going to head in here and see if we can get uh, a schedule and a price for tickets for you guys and then wander around the grounds. So here's the current um, schedule for uh, February. It's actually Valentine's Day today, February 14th. We're just entering into the uh, camp here. We're just gonna stroll around. One thing I've noted as we are coming in is these holes that you would see on like a castle or something, basically like a uh, some type of hole that would be designed to allow defense from uh, someone who's approaching, I make an assumption on that, but uh, I bet that's what that is. Because they're just all along the outside edges here. Alright, we were just greeted by a woman as we were entering into the ground whom uh, was the ticket vendor. So we were able to acquire two tickets. Um, these tickets will actually allow us to visit Skull Tower and uh, the National B Museum of Niche, it appears. Each ticket was 300 uh, dinar, which is roughly 3 euro. So for 3 euro, we get to visit three places. The concentration camp itself isn't very large, in fact. Um, and as far as information, as I stated earlier, we weren't able to find too much about it. But and what we did find was a little conflicting. Yeah, too. yeah. But basically around uh, 35,000 Jews and... Um, you know, people who are deemed uh, unworthy, as if you could say, were um, within these walls at one point. So 35,000 people passed through here. Um, the most notable information or history you'll find about this place is uh, of a, an, escape, an escape that was made. I think it was like 150 or something like that. I think 100, 150 made it, but 42 died in the process. So yeah, that's your most notable information that you'll find for here, that there was a, uh, a large group of inmates that did make a run for it. Of, um, unfortunately, a lot of them lost their lives in the process, but, you know, as uh, someone stated in uh, an article I was reading on that was um, that they died free, so, so there you go. So this main building here, just inside the door, has a museum, but I wanted to get a shot of this door here. So yeah, just inside the door, there's some information. Um, looks like mostly photos. I don't think there's uh, anyone in here. In fact, those voices upstairs are most likely a video that's playing. But uh, there's no one here, so we're kind of free to move about. <laughs> 
I won't get too much video inside of here. In case you decide to come, you can come see for yourself. All right, so if you look on list of things to do here in Nish, Serbia, you will most likely see uh, Tinker's Alley, which is this uh, strip behind us where these uh, people are walking down. Um, so basically, it's just a small strip of restaurants and cafes. I believe it's one of the only parts of the city that is actually a couple of uh, centuries old. So it's worth checking out. It's actually a neat little strip. Uh, I've got these giant pizzas that we actually just got from a pizza place called uh, I-L-F-O-R-N-O. Uh, I'm pronouncing that uh, Il Forno. I'm probably getting that wrong, but uh, if you're interested, these pizzas were only nine, uh, so they were 900 dinar, uh, which is roughly nine euro a piece, so two massive pizzas for 18 euro. Uh, so you can't beat the prices down there, that's for sure. So just behind me is the ticket office for Skull Tower. We made our uh, journey over here to check it out. We had actually purchased tickets, uh, I think it was actually a couple of days now ago, we went to the, um, the Red Cross uh, concentration camp as it's, as it's titled and there we purchased these tickets for 300 dinar a piece and that covered um, as I had stated the the camp itself the skull tower and also the National Museum but yeah the walk was only 30 minutes from where we were it's a nice sunny day out finally uh, we came over here uh, to just inform that that we had tickets already and they said just go ahead across the bridge it's a nice little creek as I would refer to it as running through here so we're gonna head this way into the um, building there which actually uh, houses the skull tower itself and we'll get a look we're here at the skull tower in Nish, Serbia a little history lesson before we go in there so you can have a, an idea of what we're actually looking at so it's the early 19th century Serbia has been occupied by the Ottomans for about four or five hundred years they, uh, and they rebel. They create an uprising and there's a, a big battle. Now, of course, this is one little country against an empire. So they're outnumbered, they're out weaponed. Uh, they're, they're not gonna win this battle. Um, so what happens is all of the, there's a, they're fighting on a hill and the general or whoever is commanding them lets all the Ottomans come up and gather around this hill and then he blows up the whole hill. He kills all the Ottomans, he kills himself, he kills his own troops. Uh, however, the loss of, that the Ottomans uh, received from that battle was so great uh, that they kind of had to set it right. They couldn't, they kind of felt punked. They couldn't, uh, couldn't really live with that. So they created what I'm about to show you. All right, so here it is. It's the aptly named Skull Tower. Uh, what the Ottomans did was they took the skulls of, of the soldiers that were killed during that battle. Uh, they made this tower that originally <clears throat> stood 15 feet tall and there was about, I think, 592 was the amount of skulls that were in there. Today there's only like 50 something left in there. Um, they believe that people have come back and taken the skulls of their family members to give them a proper burial. Of course, um, weird people would want to loot them as well, but th this is all that's left. Um, and what they did, they actually, before they put them in here, they skinned the skulls, stuffed them with cotton, and sent them all back to the Sultan in Constantinople before creating this tower as a warning to anyone who should try and stand up against the Ottomans. All right, I came down here to the river's edge to uh, try to kill two birds with one stone. This river, if I'm pronouncing it cor correctly, is the Nishaba River. Uh, the reason I wanted to note the river is, uh, in general, it's kind of like a nice place to be down here. It's kind of below street level, so it's a little quieter. And it's kind of just nice as you go along. There's places to sit, benches, and just listen to the water, you know, flow by. It's very calming. Um, but another thing, too, is that there's actually quite a bit of people fishing out of here. I saw a guy pull a decent-sized trout out of here. So if you're a fisherman and uh, that's your thing while you're you know, on vacation, surprisingly, you could probably squeeze in dropping a line here. I would probably recommend looking up the fishing laws first, but it might be something to do if you're interested. But just across the street here, up at street level, just where Rachel is there, is the Niche Fortress, which is uh, where we're about to enter into now. And uh, we'll get an idea of what's going on in there and let you guys know. We are up on top of this hill in front of this basilica uh, within Niche Fortress. 
Um, so there's a lot of points of interest in here from different eras. There's a mosque just over there. There's a, what was referred to as a lapidarium here, which is just a bunch of old artifacts that were dug out of the ground. Uh, this basilica itself is really neat. Just where the, these domed bricks are, you can actually enter into the ground. And just on the other side of this mound is a, an air shaft. So once you get down in there, you can actually look up through there. Um, but yeah, there's uh, an amphitheater here that they do shows. Uh, I'm assuming more likely in the spring and summertime. Uh, there's a bunch of powder keg rooms where they used to store powder kegs. There's a prison on these grounds. Uh, the grounds themselves are, are rather vast. If you just wanted to come for a nice stroll, um, it's a little cold now, but I, I'm assuming in the spring and the summertime, this park's going to be beautiful when all these trees are in blossom and, and there's just a lot of people uh, walking the park with their families having picnics and such. But it's definitely worth a trip down here to check out. It was free for us to enter. And um, but yeah, the, like I said, it's a nice place to uh, walk around and have an afternoon. We spent a couple hours here, so if you're interested, come check it out. So today is our last day here in Niche. Uh, tomorrow morning we actually leave for Skopje and I just wanted to hop on here and say uh, I got one more thing for you to do if you're interested. So just next to the fortress here, which is just behind me, is a market and the market is filled with basically, you know, cheap, uh, right now it's like sweats and sweaters and things of that nature, it's jacket, shoes, um, <clears throat> just different things. If you're curious, check that out. But I also wanted to say while I was on here, uh, if you've watched all the way through to the end, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you're curious, uh, we're going to be headed to uh, Skopje in northern Macedonia. That's new. Check that out. And uh, so, yeah, we'll be getting some different views as we go along. If you're curious, check out our channel. Thanks.